Um, so each candidate will have 90 seconds to answer um, each question, and then um, after the, um, all of your questions, then they'll have uh, two minutes to do uh, closing remarks. Um, so that's the format, um, and we'll get started. So. Student body as a student senator for a couple of years. Right now, I'm, here, I'm serving as the executive senator, which means I'm meeting up with all 15 senators, all 15 senators in a regular basis, making sure they're working on their senatorial projects. And uh, I believe that the leadership experience, that um, raising up the next generation, raising up the next leadership uh, folks, that will definitely bolster my uh, experience for next year. All right, Aaron, same question. What past experience have you had that has prepared you for this position and how can you leverage that as an ASPLU executive? All right, uh, for the past year, I've been working as the ASPLU programs director, helping put on events around campus, uh, working very hard to partner with as many organizations as possible to put on programming that appeals to a wide base of students, whether it um, relates to social justice, diversity, sustainability, or even just concerts or fun, like the homecoming concert with Eric Hutchinson. Uh, prior to that, I was the venues director for my sophomore year and spring of my freshman year. Uh, so I've been around the HPLU process for the last two and a half years, and I've gotten a great opportunity to see exactly um, how student representation works on campus. I feel like I have a, a good vision for how best to reach out to as many different students as possible and ensure that their, their voices are heard um, from all corners of our campus environment. All right. Uh, Emily, it's going to actually be the same question to you. So what past experience have you had that prepared you for this position? How are you leverage this for ASPLU? Um, so I've been involved with ASPLU since the first year. I was elected senator uh, as soon as I got on a campus in the fall of 2010. And I served as senator for my entire freshman year. And then in my sophomore year, I served as the entertainment chair. So I planned all the concerts that you guys saw the last year, like Alan Stone and Noah Henderson. Um, and I also was the executive secretary and public relations officer of the ASPLU last year. And then this year I served as the venues director, so I managed the catering and all the events that go on there. So I've kind of done everything in ASPLU you can do, besides being executive, um, which really lets me know how all of the ASPLU works. Um, I've also had a lot of other leadership opportunities on campus. I've worked for campus ministry, instructional technologies, I was a clubs and orgs intern, and I currently serve as the New Air Student Radio General Manager. So I kind of have my hands in a lot of what's happening at PLU, and I think that gives me a really good background to be a representative of the student body and the various interests that the students have. Um, and I think all of my past experiences are really going to help me frame my uh, job as vice president. And Ian, same question. I'm sorry, can you repeat it one more time? Yes. <laughs> Do you want me to? No, okay. <laughs> so, uh, during my freshman year and my sophomore year, I served as an ASPOU at large senator. Uh, during my sophomore year, I served as the outreach committee senator, uh, which means that I orchestrated and organized. Uh, the majority of ASPOU's efforts to communicate with the student body at large. Um, the primary project was an initiative called Talk to Me Thursday, um, where different senators went to the dining hall and back dinner and spoke with different senators, uh, excuse me, different students about the issues that ASPOU was currently dealing with and working from that angle. Um, I also worked as an admissions intern in the Office of Admission here on BOU. Um, I'm sure there are certain interns here. And, um, for those of you who don't know, admissions forms a very large backbone of kind of the administrative side of our university and has a very large PR and marketing campaign oriented uh, focus. Um, and so uh, kind of a lot of what we do there is talk to students, prospective students, and parental persons, excuse me, parents, um, <laughs> and uh, kind of advertise PLU and kind of the functions that it has. And so I had to keep up with what was going on on campus as a part of that. Um, I also served as a peer academic tutor and academic assistant on political science. 
And um, this year, I've been studying abroad in Geneva, Switzerland during the fall, and now I'm currently doing um, an academic internship in Olympia, Washington with several state representatives. Um, and those are some real world political experiences um, that would help me bring kind of that expertise and that experience and that passion um, to what I believe is primarily a political organization, namely XPO. Thank you. Thank you. All right, so now uh, the next question is directed towards the presidential candidates. So, Aaron first. What would be your first priority, objective, or goal for ASPLU if elected, and why? Um, the biggest thing that I find uh, ASPLU does well is work with other organizations on campus. Uh, I know I've said this in my candidate statement as well as on my Facebook page multiple times, but I believe that ASPLU works best when it's working with others, and particularly working with students who are passionate about a certain topic. So uh, I believe that finding students who could uh, help facilitate uh, particularly Dialogue Day, like we had this year, um, as led by Chelsea Paulson, uh, and students who understand the Parkland community and can help uh, reach out more towards building that bridge uh, would be a great first step next year towards uh, making PLU a more inclusive place for students as well as uh, for the community at large. So uh, working with organizations on campus to some of the you know, long-winded answers never stick in your brain very well. <laughs> Thomas, same question. What would be your first priority, objective, or goal if you elected For me, it would be to make an organization stand true to the purpose as it was intended back in 1977 by the Board of Regents. Um, our constitution states that our purpose is to promote academic excellence, social activities, and religious, religious growth policy and body. And before even reaching out to work with other students, work with other organizations, I believe that we need to be solid on our, as, as an organization, first and foremost. That's why I'll be working to make sure that HBLU is solid uh, on its own, and then we'll think about reaching out more and whatnot. Because without the base, everything will be shaping. What does that look like? That means promoting academic excellence, making sure that we are promoting you to study more, that you guys are utilizing the $40,000 a year um, tuition, and you guys are actually getting stuff done. And social activities, we already do a lot of things, but we've been lacking in athletics and uh, music departments. Um, I mean, how many people will actually be go to tuba concerts? Um, so, third thing is the religious growth, and um, after all, our middle name is Lutheran, and 74% uh, of our student body is Christian, and uh, although I don't quite care what kind of faith you have, but I believe by making that option available for the um, students, 74% of the students to go worship God and do their own thing. Uh, I believe that uh, will fulfill all three components, academic excellence, social activities, and religious growth. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So now, this question um, for the Vice President candidates. So first, um, what is one strength you think ASD currently has, and how do you plan to further expand upon it? Uh, thus far, I think that ASPLU has done a great job of uh, kind of innovating and uh, doing what it can to do um, a very difficult task, which is engage with students. Um, you know, students are busy, students are very busy, and don't necessarily have the time or the energy that uh, we might like them to have in order in participating in you know student government here on campus. Um, and so, what I would like to do is kind of reorient ASPLU again um, and make that a very explicit primary focus where we cater to the students' needs and do what we can to work around student schedules. Um, and some of those things would include talking to them at dinner, like talking Thursday, and maintaining the office hours that we currently have established. Something that I would like to see would be something that I've drawn from my political experience on, which is holding and organizing town halls. Um, and that would involve having the executives and senators and representatives of ASPLU um, essentially sitting down with students um, with a, an atmosphere similar to that of Dr. Christ the other night. Um, and kind of engaging with them on a conversational basis and providing you know, probably some refreshments in order to draw a bit of a crowd. So, thank you. <laughs> Thanks. And Emily, same question. What's one strength you think ASPLU currently has? How do you find the further expand on that? One of the largest strengths I think ASPLU has is um, are the people involved. I think that ASPLU has been so inspired by my coworkers in the office and the senators that have been elected. And um, it's the people on campus who really want to make change and really want to hear what the students are saying. And I think that, that the people do a really good job. Um, as Vice President, one of my duties is to oversee the staff, so both the paid staff and the volunteer staff. 
Um, and I plan to, you know, really make good choices in hiring the staff for next year and help facilitate a community that really works to grow and plan uh, events for all students who, um, you know, students and clubs that want to have events with ASPLU, as, as well as um, just encouraging our staff to work to their full potential and um, listen to the students that they're representing and be a resource for them so that they can do the best job that they can. Thank you. All right, so sticking with the Vice President candidates, and starting with Emily, there are current efforts to create a student programs board at PLU that would involve separating programming from ASPLU. What is your stance on this issue, and why do you hold this back position? Um, I'm a full in support of the University Programs Board. Um, I've been involved with many of the conversations about creating this board, and I think it's a really good way to unify the events going on on campus. If you walk past any impact board, there's like 10 events going on at one time. Um, it's hard to choose, it's hard to know what's going on. A lot of students feel like they don't know what's going on on campus. Um, and I think a place that sort of centralizes the programs on campus is really gonna help students feel like they can have more access to the activities and the programming that the um, clubs and organizations wanna offer. So I think it's a really good idea. I also think it will help ASPLU um, have less focus on the programming and more on the advocating for the students. Um, a lot of our budget right now goes towards programming, which I think has been really beneficial in the past, but if that budget were to be able to go towards more initiatives to help the student body, um, I think that that could be a way to help ASPLU grow in its transparency and its ability to advocate for what students want. Thank you. Ian, same question. Um, I'm actually in total support of this as well. Um, I think Emily said it very well that it kind of allows ASPLU to reorient itself back to kind of what was the primary purpose, namely representing the students to the administration, kind of demonstrating those initiatives and program, um, excuse me, not programming and demonstrating those initiatives and kind of going back to the basic point, which was communicating and outreach for students, and which is something that I've been very committed to. Um, and so, thank you. All right, so now. Back over to the presidential candidates. So starting with Thomas. Uh, this year, ASPD Senate passed legislation supporting the creation of gender neutral housing. If elected president, what are your specific plans for addressing gender neutral housing while in office? My plan is to look at the pilot program. Um, it is going on right now. It is happening um, either with you agree or not. Um, my goal is to get the student feedback at um, more than 80% rate so that it will have um, more direct and concise um, understanding of what went well and what went wrong and what can we improve on. So that basically it was by surveying those students who have experienced with the gender neutral housing, whether it's mixed gender or uh, gender neutral bathrooms and whatnot. Um, so I believe by doing so we'll have clear understanding what to do um, whether we want to ex expand it or what to do with it next. And it will all depend on that survey. Okay, thank you. Aaron, same question. Um, I'm really excited to see how gender neutral housing goes next year because I think it's a, a great step for the LGBTQ community on this campus feeling accepted and feeling like uh, their concerns are heard. Uh, I think that to really understand how the program goes, to say that we'll know how it works within a year uh, would be uh, a pretty pretty big jump to assume that within one year we'll have this great idea of how it operates. Um, so I would spend most of next year, if I were elected president, uh, focusing on awareness for students who uh, may not understand what gender neutral housing is or why it was important. Uh, I think that a big part of uh, the uh, contention regarding gender neutral housing has just been uh, misconceptions about how it's going to be implemented, how it affects students um, who choose to live in it and students who choose not to live in it. And so the first year uh, is not going to be some time where we see how it long term affects our campus. So instead, uh, I think the focus needs to be on understanding how it's been implemented, why it's been implemented, and why it is such an important step for our campus. Thank you. All right. So, sticking with the presidents, um, Aaron, what is the importance of increasing ASPU's community involvement, and how do you specifically plan to advance this as one of the, uh, one of ASPU's priorities? I think that uh, 
as a university, it's, it's hard to remember that uh, there's a community outside of ourselves. Uh, when I first got to PLU, one of my favorite things about it was just how central everything felt. Everybody, for the most part, stayed on campus, or if they left, they, it was quite a distance. And um, while at first it seemed like it was like, oh, it's our great little PLU uh, bubble, it's become something that uh, I've come to realize is not necessarily uh, great for student growth in terms of learning how to live within a community. As soon as you move off campus, uh, it's an entirely new ball game. Uh, and I don't think that students have a real understanding for why it's important that we uh, engage with the community. There's been lots of problems that we faced. I know the students are uh, many times frustrated using words like PY and uh, other terms that just uh, degrade the community. I don't think that that doesn't help the community uh, learn to accept PLU being here, and it doesn't accept PL it doesn't allow PLU to accept uh, being in a space that uh, many students feel poorly about. And I think that to uh, to facilitate dialogue uh, is great, but the steps that it really takes to reconcile our campus with the surrounding community is uh, just learning to live in common space and do uh, normal activities. The movie night that happened this last weekend is a great example. Um, it's great to talk about the serious issues, but sometimes you just need to learn to have fun with your neighbors. And so I think uh, movie nights, game nights, working at Washington High School will be the best way to uh, move the PLU and apartment community forward. Thank you. Thomas, same question. Importance of PLU's community involvement, how do you advance that plan? I believe that engaging with the community is tying back to the second point of our constitution um, in terms of our purpose to promote social activities. Students, we are learning here, um, but what are we doing with the learning? Um, we need to go out and serve students. We need to go out and serve the Parkland community. Not just Parkland community, the Tacoma community, but then sooner or later we'll all grow up and we'll go out to the society and all the, do all the good stuff. But we need to practice, and I, I believe this is a perfect opportunity for us to practice serving. And uh, with recent um, proposal of uh, creating five, six new uh, off-campus senator spots, uh, I'm very excited to have more manpower on the, our student senate. With 21 uh, senators next year, we'll have um, an opportunity to reach out to all students and get their opinion. and. Uh, uh, get the news out. And what I'm most excited about is that those off-campus students is outside of um, the PLU community. They are a part of Parkland, greater Parkland community. So those juniors and seniors who took advantage of the PLU education system will, able to, uh, will be able to come back and bring back uh, what they've learned and use that uh, education um, in real life. Um, so I'm very excited to um, continue with that motion. Thank you. Going back over to our vice presidential candidates. So Ian, uh, how do you understand PLU's unique position on campus, and how can you leverage it as an executive to ignite change? I'm sorry, how do I understand PLU's? A, sorry, A is PLU's unique position on campus. Hold this, how do you? <laughs> <laughs> Well, um, ASPLU is kind of the primary form of student government here, um, and with, as a political science major, I've you know, spent you know, the majority of my you know, adult life uh, studying politics and government and things of that nature, and so I think that it is very important to recognize that government is um, a place where we can kind of come together and work together and accomplish dreams and goals that we have together. Um, and so some of the goals that I've already explicitly talked about, you know, student outreach and kind of, you know, something else would be like civic education, um, and so I want to use ASPLU as a means to kind of channel and ignite uh, PLU and the student body in terms of the political um, you know, and civic-minded people that we are you know, and that we should be, you know, which is why we're at a liberal arts college. Um, and so working in tandem with you know, other organizations such as RHA and RHCs and different clubs and organizations, whether topical or music-oriented or athletic, I think that ASPLU has a very unique opportunity to kind of combine with these organizations and then work together with them to kind of improve uh, the experience that students have here on campus. Um, and so that is what I think, that's how I view it as to students. Thank you. Emily, same question, this time about ESPU. Can you repeat the question? Yes. 
How do you understand the PA's and use unique position on campus, and how can you leverage it as an executive to ignite change? PLU, ASPLU, as, as Ian said, is, is the voice of the students, um, and we're an organization that can, you know, when ASPLU puts its stamp on something, the administration takes notice, because we have a reputation of really passing bills and resolutions that we believe the students are advocating for. Um, I know ASPLU does everything it can, everything it can to um, get the students' opinions on all of the legislation we pass through, because we want to make sure that what we are saying, we're actually advocating for the student body. Um, so we're, we're the voice of the students to the administration, which means that um, what students want, we try to make happen. PLU wouldn't exist without us here. Um, we're only here for four years, but these four years are so important to us. Um, why not take the chance to make it the best PLU we can? Um, so as the HPLU executive, I want to help activate the students to really care for and advocate for their community. Um, that involves the activities and the programs that go on. That involves um, the actual facilities, if we want to make improvements um, or add or take away parts of the campus that we feel are or aren't working. Um, but it's also about facilitating conversations and dialogues to make our student community um, the best it can be. We all chose to come here and we're all here together and it's um, kind of an amazing time in our lives to be with students of our same age and I think that activating the student body to really come together in a community is something that I, I think ASPLU does and I hope to continue as an executive. Thank you. All right, sticking with our vice presidential candidates, um, Emily. So campus partnerships have been pivotal to the success of ASPLU in recent years. How do you specifically plan to continue fostering these relationships? ASPLU doesn't function unless we work with other organizations. And I think um, that I've had my foot in the door with a lot of groups on campus. I've been really involved with um, Media Board, and I've been involved with Clubs and Orgs and Campus Ministry, um, sort of the, the big tiers on campus that help facilitate programming and whatnot on campus. I think it's just a matter of seeking out and not just being sought out. So going to the Dew Center and asking, what kind of events do you guys want to see? Um, going and talking to students who aren't part of clubs and asking why they think their voices aren't being heard. Um, and, and talking to the organizations as well as being talked to. So just keeping that open communication up and then being available and open to all kinds of programming and projects, whether it's helping the Women's Center plan a banquet or um, adding swipe cards in NBR, just the sort of programming that we get to do with other organizations helps kind of us represent you best. Thank you. Ian, same question. Well, uh, I think I kind of touched on this in my previous answer. Um, and basically, I, I agree. I think that ASPLU has a duty and obligation to uh, seek out students, you know, which is kind of something I've been trying to talk about as part of, you know, outreach initiatives. Um, and working with other clubs and organizations to kind of uh, find areas of overlap um, to kind of facilitate better communication and better programming and better uh, events for students and for the betterment of students. Um, I think it's something that's very crucial. I think that it's important to note that with the divergence between ASPLU and the programming side, which we mentioned earlier, um, this is an area that would definitely continue and would definitely continue to be very important, but would take a backseat to kind of the policy advocacy aspect, which would be um, you know kind of the student government side of things, the initiation between ASPLU and the administration, uh, which is something that I think I'm uniquely qualified for interning at LP and interacting with different legislators and lobbyists. Um, but going back to kind of the programming aspect, something that I would really like to see is um, a similarity to something the social work degree does here, which is um, civic education lobby days. Um, different universities send different like, delegations of students to talk with legislators and educate legislators about student issues and about higher ed issues. And so this is a particular program that I would really like to see kind of edu educate the government that we interact with so closely, it will be as, you know, like 45 minutes away, and educate the students at the same time about politics and about the government and about, um, you know, something which we all deal with, which is, you know, the world in which we live. Thank you. All right, presidential candidates, same question. So, campus partnerships have been pivotal to the success of ASB in recent years. How do you specifically plan to continue fostering these relationships, starting with Thomas? HPLU represents students' voice, um, but I, I feel like the really unique thing about us is that we have a we have a huge budget. We have one hundred eighty-eight thousand dollars a year budget, and uh, 
so far we've been underutilizing it. And uh, I want to start using their money in partnership with other organizations that are doing great things with small budgets. Um, for example, um, recently we funded Women's Center, and uh, I'm so excited to see what the results would be like. And also working on, working with athletes, um, working with athlete, athletes who um, perform, who um, try their best, and who is needing an audience, and the student body who is needing good games to watch um, go out and run. Um, so I'm excited to see that. Also with SOAC, um, music departments, they lack the audience. Concert attendance is very low. And I'd love to see ACW stepping in and say, hey students, let's go. Let's go have fun. Let's go support these musicians and have good music heard. Um, so that's where I see um, ACW partnering up with other, uh, other organizations. And also with uh, small organizations, student-led groups. Um, so far we've been funding it with a $10,000 um, budget for um, clubs and arts. Uh, but I'd love to see uh, more, more clubs coming in and asking for money, putting up events. Thank you. Same question. Uh, I think Thomas the nail on the head uh, right at the end there, just about how we need more clubs uh, coming to ASPLU to partner with us. Uh, we do have we do have funds that we can we can assist these students in, but I think more than that, uh, putting the ASPLU stamp on something allows it to, to get out to an audience that otherwise it, it may not um, necessarily appeal to. We have uh, a large base on Facebook, Twitter, because um, social media. Uh, uh, you guys use that, right? <laughs> so, okay. Um, it's, it's a place where ASPLU has, uh, does represent all students and as such reaches, um, uh, I think it'd be, it'd be hard to say necessarily all students, but I think it reaches a vast majority of students. And so I believe using ASPLU's voice uh, to reach out to as many students as possible and finding uh, where they fit at PLU. Uh, I'd love to work on uh, having some kind of document within ASPLU, um, like a binder that sits there and helps students find clubs um, and organizations that uh, can, uh, advocate for them and even just allow them to feel like they're included and participate, find people with uh, like interests and uh, students that they can, they can feel connected to. Specifically, um, working with RHA this year has been fantastic. We partnered with them for the uh, uh, homecoming concert with Eric Hutchinson. We also uh, worked with the uh, Office of Alumni uh, to help create more opportunities for students to connect with people who have left PLU, uh, which is a lot of ways that uh, PLU students get jobs, feel like they're part of something bigger than just the seven uh, grades that they see while they're here. So, specifically that. Thank you. All right, so now, staying with our presidential candidates, and as I read this, I feel like you just answer this, but hopefully there's something more. Um, so each year, candidates state that they will improve students' voice and increase ACE for the visibility. How are some handle ways you plan to achieve this? Sorry, uh, ASPLU's visibility has been, uh, I think, one of the most commonly brought up issues up until this year. Uh, and I think that it's it's really, it just comes down to uh, ASPLU remembering to stand by that. Uh, at the beginning of the year, I feel like we always start having these great ideas about how we're going to get students involved, how we're going to get students uh, influenced. And the longer we go, the more we get involved with each other, the more uh, we kind of just assume everybody understands things like we do. And a big part of that is just uh, encouraging students to find the information that they're looking for and to partner with uh, student media to ensure that that information gets out there. Uh, there's a lot of misconceptions, I feel like, about what ASPLU does and uh, that we just kind of come in here and sit at our meetings and uh, decide for everybody what the university wants. And um, that's a tragic misconception. We welcome as many student voices as possible. And I think transparency involves just being available and being present with students, uh, whether they have serious concerns or not. Uh, being in, more involved on campus just for students to recognize us. Maybe um, executives next year sit up at lunch and just have lunch with their gold name tags on so students can recognize them. Um, comment box, comment card box, um, it's been brought up tons of times. It's still never quite fully uh, fully come to fruition through no fault of any particular person. It just it falls by the wayside as other things come in. I think transparency needs to be uh, a key issue that we remember to uh, improve on all year round, not just when we start. So, thank you. And Tom, same question. We've been doing talking with Thursdays, Trash Team for Treasure, and um, a couple other 
different outreach methods to reach out to senior body, but I really think what it boils, boils down to is uh, sticking true to the, um, the fundamentals. What are we? We're students' voice. We're representing students. And the, from there, senators can go out and say, oh yeah, I'm representing this constituency, and I will continually ask them what they think, reach out to them and whatnot. And directors, same thing. And uh, by doing so, I believe that uh, the students will see us and we will go out and proactively ask them, what are you thinking? Uh, here's new things coming out, and uh, how can we work together? Because after all, we're representing this human body. And um, one thing I'm excited about next year is a weekly video project where we'll, ACL will, will um, make a video of, of about five minutes of what we have done that week and um, you know make it funny and comical and all that. So the students will be interested in watching them and seeing what ACL has done for them. And uh, by that way, students can understand what we've been doing and uh, all in comments and uh, messages they can input their ideas as well. Thank you. All right, so that ends the predetermined questions. So we'll start um, asking some of the um, questions from the audience. So um, we'll start with a question that is for all candidates, and we'll start um, with the vice presidential candidates with Emily Sarton. Um What is one way that you think you would run the VP position differently than your opponent? I think um, one of the advantages that I have is that I have really been involved in on campus for three years and in a lot of different ways. Um, I've been really invested in kind of what I would call the domain of the lower UC, so the clubhouse and student media and ASPLU um, and student life. And so I think that I just have this leadership experience as well as this um, kind of involvement experience that will let me uh, both I just, I just know, I feel like I know how ASPLU works. Uh, just, I've done it for all while I've been in college. Um, and also, I've managed a staff before. I um, hired and managed two separate staffs this year alone. Um, I, I know how to lead, and I know how to lead according to um, the ways that ASPLU has succeeded, and I hope to lead differently in the way that ways that we failed. Thank you. Ian, same question. Well, uh, I would like to start off by saying that um, my freshman and sophomore years, um, I, I was also very much involved on campus. Um, I was a part of ASPLU and learned how ASPLU functioned. I know ASPLU. I know different organizations around campus, um, such as club sports and um, admissions office and uh, the peer counseling and the peer um, academic assistance and things of that nature. And so I have been involved on campus as well. Um, you might notice there that Emily mentioned that she's been involved for three years. Um, that is a correct charge. There is a direct comparison there. I have been gone for a large part of this year. Um, I studied abroad in U.S. school in the fall, and I'm not currently taking classes. Instead, I'm doing a full-time academic internship with legislators over in Olympia, Washington. Um, and I do not think that this is a weakness. I think this is a very profound strength that I have. Um, I have gone out into the world and kind of seen um, real-world applications to what student government is meant to be, what it is meant to be like, what it is meant to emulate. Um, and that is a skill and an expertise that I want to bring here. I want to bring here my ability to have a policy discussion, my ability to represent, my ability to argue on behalf of students, and my ability to empathize with students. I have spent hours and hours responding and talking to constituents of the different offices that I work for, um, and learning to talk with them, talking with real people, and interviewing them and discussing with them and interacting with different people all have been very fundamental and crucial aspects of my experience this past year. And I think that the majority of students want to study abroad and want an internship. And I think that those are things that I want to promote as an SPA executive. Thank you. All right, so now presidential candidates. So starting with Thomas, what is one way that you think you would run the president position differently than your opponent? I have various different um, experience. I worked with ISS um, as an international peer advisor in the summer. And I worked with our campus ministry, university congregation, and student setting boards. Um, but the biggest difference that I have is that I have legislative experience. Um, I've been a senator for a couple of years. I've um, passed bills and resolutions. 
and I've worked with senators here at Bayonne 101 basis. And uh, with that, um, as a president, um, it is crucial to have that close relationship with all senators, making sure, one, making sure they're doing their jobs, right? But then two, are they motivated? Are they, are they loved? Are they uh, encouraged? Um, so I, I feel like um, I have that experience. And also, um, knowing different ways to go around things uh, when they get stuck. For example, a staff member ignores their emails, what to do. Well, cease their boss, you know, something like that. So, um, with those experiences, uh, closely with the legislative side, um, I truly believe that um, we will have a more complete Senate, more effective Senate next year. Thank you. And Aaron, same question. Um, the way that I think that I would uh, lead differently is just understanding where a uh, vast majority of students are coming from. Not that Thomas wouldn't, but I think that um, I have uh, experience opening myself up to ideas that I'm very uncomfortable with. And uh, being able to relate to students from all over the map. Uh, as an orientation guide last year, I had the opportunity to deal with students who were talkative, students who weren't uh, students that lived on upper campus, lower campus, and all over the map. And I think I have a lot of experience just uh, understanding that just because I don't necessarily um, identify or uh, even fully grasp where one student is coming from, uh, the ability to just uh, open up and understand that their voice is just as valid as mine, just as valid as my friends. Uh, I think that uh, an important skill is just uh, being able to advocate for all students. And uh, I've worked with so many different people over my time in ASPLU. Uh, I've worked professionally with staff trying to plan events. I've worked professionally with outside companies working on events. I've worked with students uh, just trying to make a small event happen in the cave. They just email me and say, I don't know how to set anything up. Can you come help? And I just, uh, I've experienced the, the ups and downs of putting on events, the ups and downs of advocating for students uh, in so many different mediums throughout campus. So, thank you. All right. So, another question for everybody. Um, so we'll start with the presidential candidates this time. Uh, so despite PLU's green dot program, many red dots still occur on and on and around campus. What will you do to address this issue, if anything, starting with air? Uh, this is a very touchy subject, quite obviously. Um, uh, and coming from it, uh, from a male perspective, I think it's very hard for me, considering what percentage occur to males and what uh, percentage uh, occur to female students on this campus. And I think the biggest thing we can do is uh, encourage uh, just that the Women's Center is a safe space. I think a lot of students, um, their their main concern is that uh, it'll happen and they, they won't know what to do. And I think understanding the welcoming spaces that exist on this campus uh, is the first step towards taking students that may have already faced this or will face it in the future. Um, I think that that's a, a, the biggest thing that the student body at large can do. Uh, as an executive, uh, it's very hard for me to advocate oh, that I'm going to be able to step into every student's life and make them make the right decision. Uh, I think that encouraging students to go to Green Dot training and making it mandatory for first year students is uh, a big step that I believe has already been taken. It was my freshman year. Uh, and I think just um, expanding the Green Dot program to not just be you coming and uh, experience it as a freshman and then you go back to it when you want, um, but it becomes uh, a mandatory idea that, that students adhere to this and realize that it's just, it's not okay uh, to not advocate for people who are in this situation and uh, having students feel responsible when they're out at parties and it's hard to it's it's a hard thing to do but understanding that the support network that also exists for people who do stand up for their peers and realize that uh, it's not appropriate and what's happening uh, is just it's not right thank you Thomas same question I'm thinking about two things first thing is education that is not just during first year or second year, but then throughout all four years. Uh, the education that is um, motivating and challenging uh, to students. Because one, we're learning something new every day. And two, uh, this is a serious issue. Second thing is college, the PLU atmosphere. When we are having the social activities, the safe social activities that, uh, sponsored by, that are sponsored by ACLU, um, we'll have more happy atmosphere uh, on this campus. And I believe uh, when atmosphere changes, uh, incidents will um, change as well, and more red, red dots will turn into green dots. Thank you. Thank you. 
All right, so now moving over to the vice presidential candidates. So we'll start with Ian. So again, the question is, despite PLU's green dot program, many red dots still occur on and around campus. What will you do to address this issue with the Well, Well, uh, this is a very difficult and kind of complicated issue, um, but it all boils down to one simple thing that, you know, people have a right to be safe. Uh, and I think that there is an orientation within our culture at large, not at PLU, but at large, in which we talk about preventing violence. And I think the reality is that preventing violence is not the way to go about this. We must advocate peace. Um, and that might sound kind of corny, kind of cliche. Um, you know, and you know, I hear it, yeah. But, <laughs> but my point is that, that it, an orientation in which we say, oh, this is, you know, like this is something that it happens over there. It happens away from us. This is not something that I do. And so it's not my responsibility. It's a very flawed understanding of this system. Um, and so I would echo Thomas's statements that, you know, kind of more education, more green job training, I would hesitate away from it being mandatory. Um, but I think that having that opportunity would be very good for students. I think kind of combating rape culture, quote unquote, um, is something that must be done and should be done. Um, everywhere, especially in college campuses, because you know we are the future in a very real sense. Um, this demographic is the one that will form uh, the culture for generations to come. So changing it here and now amongst ourselves is kind of how we go about fixing that problem long term. I think the Women's Center and the D Center are valuable resources, and I think that uh, ASPU should kind of funnel people to them, and I think that it should also be a place where people are, feel safe to come and talk, um, and kind of offer that venue as well. Um, Thank you. Emily, same question. Well, just to start off, I'm a feminist, so <laughs> just saying. Um, so I think that there's been a lot of really interesting conversations about rape and sexual assault in our culture in general, not just at PLU. Um, and one of the things that I really want to stress is that decreasing of rape culture. So it doesn't just mean I'm going to go to Green Dot, oh, I'm going to make sure he doesn't slip something in her drink. It's about not making jokes, and it's about um, not you know, letting yourself get into a situation where you see this happening and you don't speak up for someone. Um, Safe It and Green Dot are two really, really great programs on our campus that advocate to make everyone active bystanders. Um, I don't think a majority of the guys here on campus go out on night and you're like, I'm gonna rape someone tonight. <laughs> but that being said, I think that we as students have a responsibility to make sure everyone is safe and that we're all um, keep, keep, keep cared for. Um, it's not a joke. Sexual assault does happen on this campus. It's something really sensitive and personal to me. Um, and when a victim is sexually assaulted or raped, it, it, they can often feel powerless. Um, and they need to know that the Women's Center and the Counseling Center and other confidential counselors on campus are there for them and we are there to support them. And I think it's important to, um, so on one side, promote that education about decreasing the rape culture that it's not just don't get raped, it's don't rape. Um, and I think the other side of it is how do we support those students who do experience that in a way that's confidential and safe for them. Um, so the counseling center, making sure that there's places that they can go where they feel safe. Thank you. All right. So now um, we have a question just for the presidential candidates. So we will start with Thomas. Uh, what is ASPU's role with athletics and how do you justify, or would you justify, using money from our representative government towards a department with its own budget? Currently, it's almost, uh, it doesn't exist. There's um, no really relationship with athletics. And that's why I'm promoting um, ASPLU to closing that gap between athletics and ASPLU. And how do I justify it? One, we're just not using the money right now. We need to spend it either way. And um, um, how do I, there are a lot of athletes on this campus, and uh, those free games that are taking place, students are not going to. Um, and um, being an athlete myself, um, I, I understand, I know uh, the difference that it makes. And uh, student government, as we stand to promote social activities on this, student, on, on, on this campus, um, that is the justification to spend our money um, rather than just sitting around um, to uh, promote students to go to these events, promote students to be more social and have fun on campus. Thank you. Aaron, same question. Um, 
I think that the, the current state of the ASPLU athletics relations is actually uh, better than Thomas makes it sound. I have worked uh, at least twice directly this year as programs director um, with members of the athletic department, uh, coordinating ASPLU uh, funds and ASPLU personnel to help, uh, at, uh, particularly at trick or treat night at the Halloween volleyball game, um, as well as working on uh, a new ad campaign that athletics is putting together. And I think. Uh, the best way that uh, ASPLU can involve itself is it is hard, it's a sticky situation to spend every student's money on, uh, on a small, not necessarily a small portion of campus, but on a particular portion of campus. But unfortunately that's the way that most, uh, most spending ends up going. You, it's very hard to spend money and uh, address everybody's concerns and include everybody. And I think making sure that it's a proportional amount uh, when it comes to funds is uh, the best that ASPLU can do and can make sure that uh, even if it only necessarily affects a certain amount of students, uh, that the majority of students I would say, well, that is an important portion, and those students do deserve to have um, some funds sent to them as well. That being said, it is a department that already has its own budget, um, and so it would be a smaller portion than other uh, underfunded places on a campus, such as the Women's Center. Um, the other big thing is just ASPLU publicizing athletic events. Uh, we've been working on a calendar this year uh, within uh, ASPLU, uh, specifically within programs, to have all programs on campus fall under one calendar that's easier for students to use. And I think that including athletic events, and particularly the uh, nearby athletic events. I know I always have more fun when I go to events that are, uh, even if it's just university places. So, for Thank, else. Thank you. All right. So now we have a question for everybody again. Um, so we'll start again with the vice presidential candidates, um, starting with Emily. What relationship, if any, do you see between religion and student government? Please explain your response. Um, I think that um, we are a Lincoln University, as Tom Kevin stated in one of his opening statements, and that we do have a large population of religious students on campus, but it's really important to acknowledge that there's a lot of students who um, don't believe in a particular faith or don't actively practice one. Um, I'm really passionate about the interfaith movement on campus. I was one of the founding members of the Interfaith Council, um, and I think that just opening up that dialogue and ASPL, you can serve as sort of a foundation to advocate for students who feel like their faith beliefs aren't being listened to or are being attacked on campus. Um, there's nothing to be lost with having dialogues between students of faith and no faith with different faiths. And um, I've been a campus ministry steward. I've been really involved in that office, and I see the ways that ASPLU and campus ministry can overlap. Um, whether it's as simple as organizing a hike with outdoor work in campus, campus ministry, um, or um, we've recently passed legislation to give some money to campus ministry to do some programming that was a little outside of the budget. So it can happen, but I do think we need to be careful in making sure that we're listening to all of the students, not just those who are Christian and especially Lutheran. Um, it's studied that when you talk to people about their beliefs, your, your beliefs don't lessen, they instead strengthen. Um, and so just having those open dialogues and really um, just being cognizant of the fact that we all believe in different things, but we still have people we're just here to love each other. Um, so kind of being a, an advocate for discussion and dialogue. Thank you. And Ian, same question. Well, both of my parents are pastors, um, and so I grew up in a very uh, Christian environment, in a very fundamental and basic way. Uh, and that has led to kind of a very deep-seated respect and understanding, I think, of Christianity and of religions as a whole. That said, I'm an atheist. <laughs> and um, so to answer your question directly, Ian, um, I think that religion forms people. I think that it can form the very basis of your entity. And I think that it invariably, therefore, impacts the policies and um, programs that you do. And I don't think that there's anything wrong with that. I would not, for instance, say no to funding a campus ministry program because I'm an atheist, just to make that clear. Um, I, I agree with Emily. I think that basically the point of government, again, is for us to come together. And so I think that ASPU can serve as a function to kind of bring all manner of face and non face like me uh, to the table and kind of facilitate a dialogue that raises kind of these big questions. I love talking about this. I love this conversation and I love this dialogue. Um, and so that is something and a passion and a, a compassion. Uh, that I would want to bring uh, to ASPLU, and that would involve programming, such as discussions on this matter. Um, I would love to have some of those YouTube conferences. I don't know if you guys have seen those between like Richard Dawkins 
and William Lane Craig or something of that nature. It might be a little bit out of our budget, but I think that'd be <laughs> lost. So, thank you. All right, so presidential candidate, starting with Aaron. What relationship, if any, do you see between religion and student government? Please explain. Well, um, I would say that uh, ASPLU, as I said, works best when it works with other organizations, but at the same time, ASPLU needs to know uh, when to step back and encourage other organizations in doing the work that they understand best. Um, I think all the different groups we have on campus uh, that address religion are, do a fantastic job of allowing students to find a safe place uh, to worship and believe as they feel fit. Uh, Interfaith Council, InterVarsity, For the King, Ignite, Campus Ministry, uh, Buddhism Club, there's just so many great places for students to find their own religious place, and I think uh, the more ASPLU tries to directly involve itself with uh, those organizations and become its ASPLU and this person, uh, the more it might start to become a mix of student government and student government agenda with religious faith, and I think that's it's a very hard place to encourage students to feel comfortable if they feel like an organization representing all students is somehow uh, impeding their ability to uh, worship, which is something that people take very seriously and is a very personal experience. So to, um, not to say that ASPLU should not be involved in any way, I think ASPLU has done a great job of encouraging campus ministry and improving relations with campus ministry and with religious organizations um, of all faiths and from all walks of life, and I think that uh, to have a direct involvement would be folly, but to uh, also to step away and let them uh, operate without our support and without our connection to students would also be just as much of a folly. So, thank you. Thomas, same question. One third of our purpose is to promote the religious activities of Austin and Body. And um, so far, ACLU has been lacking in uh, partnering up with other ministries to make that option available for those students who have um, faith. Um, and uh, for next year, um, I want to see ASPLU um, partnering up with ministries, um, having events like Homecoming or Lollapalooza that students can come and enjoy their time, but, um, but it's, it will stay as an option for all students to enjoy for whoever, whoever wants to uh, come. And, to answer your question, I believe it's a crucial part as it being one third of our purpose as an organization as a whole, um, which we're fond upon. Um, so um, I hope that answers your question. Thank you. All right. So again, I have a question for everybody. Um, I'm trying to figure out how to word this. It's currently worded as a yes or no answer. Um, <laughs> so. Yeah. Nice, easy one. You can answer with a yes or no if you want. Um, so we will again go, go over to the vice presidents. Um, so I'll just ask it. So, do you think the purpose of ASBLU, written in 1977 by the Board of Regents rather than students, are outdated and/or does not reflect the current culture of PLU? So we will start with Ian. No. <laughs> I, I think that all guiding documents have to be kind of viewed within their time period. Uh, and I do not think that the basic tenets of what the, I'm sorry, what's the document called again? The, the, the purpose. The purpose of ASPLU um, is updated. I think that we have done a good job of evaluating it within its modern context. Um, up until this year, as far as I can tell. Um, I think that we have done a good job of not necessarily enforcing um, a Lutheran heritage on people who don't want it, um, but not necessarily um, diverging too far from it. I think that Dr. Christ said it very well when he talked about how our Lutheran heritage is not something to be scared of. It's not something uh, that must be enforced either. It is an invitation to dialogue, to ask big questions, and to challenge things. And so, I think that that is a very basic component of who we are and um, shapes uh, the reason that many of us come here, myself included. Uh, and so no, I do not think it is necessarily inherently outdated. A fundamental reading of it, however, I would probably have some fairly strong objections to. Thank you. Emily, same question. Yes. Um, I do think that um, as a document written, was it 45 years ago? 
um, that there can be some changes and improvements made, that um, PLU is a totally different place now. I served as the chair of the Guided Docs Committee when I was a senator, and we reworked through the entire statement of policy of ASPLU, um, and, or the bylaws, sorry. And uh, they were adjusted in the early 2000s, and just in the five or six years since they were reworked, we changed almost all of them. Um, well, not almost all of them, we changed a lot of them. And I think that it could benefit ASPLU to re-examine that document and make some really discernible decisions on whether or not those values that were dictated by um, a group of people who are not students really advocate for what the students want. Um, and so I think that they've served ASPLU really well so far and that we've done really amazing things, but um, there's nothing to be heard by at least taking, creaking, cracking them open and saying, what's actually going on here? What do they say? And, um, does it actually pertain to 2013? Thank you. All right, presidential candidate, same question, starting with Thomas. Do you think the purpose of ASW written in 1977 by the Board of Regents rather than students are outdated <coughs> and or does not reflect the current culture of the field? No, I don't think it's outdated at all. But however, I also think that it does not reflect the current culture of, of PLU um, as it has been deviating from the uh, uh, original purpose as it was intended back in the days. Um, any government needs a constitution to, uh, it's a base, uh, <coughs> anything is a base. And if you were to make some changes, it would have to be on our bylaws. Our constitution will have to stay true uh, as it is founded. Thank you. And Aaron. <laughs> this is nice, let's put we got it here. Uh, I'd say yes, uh, it is outdated, and uh, not necessarily that it needs to be thrown away for that reason, though. I think it's a, it's a great way to look back at what the original intent of ASPLU was, but if ASPLU's or, uh, mission, as we've, all, I think, all stated multiple times tonight, is to represent student voice, uh, I don't think it's to represent past regents' voice, or to necessarily uh, follow in what past regents would have wanted. Uh, it's, it's a great place to look at what the original intent was and to give us an idea of our heritage and where we're coming from. But if our goal is to truly represent the students that currently reside on this campus, uh, I think we need to look more at what those students want and how those students are voicing their concerns. I think a much more uh, accurate way to look at ASPW would be looking at the mission statement set every year by the students in it. I think uh, those students have a much better uh, grasp of what current students want than the Regents did in 1977, knowing what the year 2013 students are looking for in ASPLU. Um, and that sounds rather harsh, but I think that it's, it's, a good, it's a place to look at for inspiration and for an idea of um, what the ideals of student leadership really are about, but not necessarily to guide our everyday decisions. Thank you. So the final um, Q&A question uh, is to the presidential candidate, and starting with Aaron. What kinds of policies will you be pushing for what, what kinds of policies will you be pushing for that will benefit commuter students? Um, uh, I know it's been a conversation that uh, has been had in the past and that students are having, uh, particularly Emily is having right now as venues director, is looking at uh, turning the cave into a commuter lounge during the day. I'm a big advocate of, of that idea that commuter students at the moment, um, Hinderley is, is a great place for them and I know they feel a sense of community there, but having a, a second option uh, the cave is underutilized during the day. Uh, as venues director, the majority of events go on at night, and I know Emily said that exact, that exact thing, is that students don't use it during the day, and um, that's, that's a space that's very cool and very very encouraging for your, uh, just lounging about, commuter lounge. Uh, it's, a, it's a space that's underutilized, and I think that encouraging commuter students to utilize it is a, a big step in making them feel like they're on a central part of campus. Uh, I also think, uh, having more online ways for community students to feel involved uh, and having all students involved, like an online calendar that uh, addresses events that appeal to students. Right now, uh, the campus calendar is, 20, is made using a uh, program called 25 Live that rarely separates out student events from uh, where the staff safety committee is meeting. And I think having a, a, an easy way for community students to find while they're home whether or not uh, they need to uh, come back to PLU to enjoy an event um, is a big step in making them feel included, making them uh, feel like they don't have to be on campus to learn about campus events. Thank you. And Thomas, same question. I believe that fulfilling the student 
purpose, our government purpose as a whole would again solve this problem, not just the student body as a whole, but then commuter students, they, um, they usually go to classes and um, usually that's about it, have some students, but then when we have to hang out, we actually have to meet up in different places and whatnot, and that's where um, sports, sporting events and music events can uh, come into play, where they can come and enjoy the other students, uh, the musicians and athletes, and um, who are also PLU students, and um, will be welcoming commuter students in that aspect, and then from there, conversation can take place, and community can um, form, um, so that months down the road, um, they will be invited to, and more than feel welcome to, go to other events as well. Thank you. So this ends the question and answer portion. So um, it's time now to for each of you to be able to give your closing statements. So you will have two minutes, and we will go in reverse order of the initial question. Um, so we'll start first with Ian. I would just want to start by thanking everybody who came out here uh, to hear us talk and debate and discuss tonight. Uh, for those of you who might have come last year, we had what was considered fairly substantial turnout that year, and well, you guys very successfully beat them up. <laughs> blew them out of the water, basically. So that is great um, and really bodes well for the future of ASPLU and of PLU at large because it reflects a, a growing acceptance and acknowledgement of the importance of ASPLU and of student involvement in the decisions that ASPLU is going to be making. Uh, so I thank you all for that. Secondly, I would like to kind of go back to what I was talking about throughout this entire day, or this entire night, excuse me, and the basic premise of ASPLU as I see it um, is to serve as a representative between the students and the faculty and the administration. And I, again, think that I am very uniquely qualified with a political history um, and political experience and experience where I have traveled abroad and done things that students want to do and things that PLU advertises as kind of what the typical PLU student does and something that I think is very true and very right and that is, you know, that by going abroad we learn more about ourselves and about our culture here and that is something that I want to continue advocating for. I want to continue advocating for civic engagement. Um, I've talked about the lobby days and utilizing the proximity to Olympia that we have here and that is something else that I want to work at and continue. I think the conversation around gender neutral housing should be continued. I think that it will be limited, uh, implemented on a limited basis next year. And I think that this conversation has been fruitful and healthy for ACE or for PLU. And I think that it, it should continue next year and that we can reassess as needed as we always should. I finally want to say uh, that sustainability is something that we haven't really touched on a whole lot here, but it is something that I'm very passionate about um, and want to continue to work at and you know, that all involved with selecting an appropriate sustainability director and programs such as weighing and publishing the amount of waste that we have in the university center and things of that nature. So I urge you all to vote, even if you don't vote for me. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Emily, closing statement. I also would like to thank you all for coming out tonight. Um, it was a little surprising and awesome to walk in and see the room so full of students who are really taking an active role and who's going to represent them next year. Um, so I just want to highlight a couple of points that I'm really passionate about. Um, as I said before, I'm a feminist and I also consider myself an advocate. Um, so I'm really interested in breaking down the walls that we create that promote difference and inequality. Um, I'm studying a lot about privilege and oppression this semester and I think it's really important that we have those conversations on campus. Um, how are we as PLU privileged and how do we break down the walls within our community? Um, I also want to be an advocate for students who don't feel like their voices are being heard on campus. Um, so that is student that that is students who are um, part of an LGBT community or um, of a minority faith who feel like they're um, being silenced by their oppression. And that also means uh, students who aren't in clubs, who just live in TSTAD and don't really do much, but want to be feel like they're being um, advocated for on campus. And so, how are we going to sort of get to those kids who don't join clubs but still are represented by our student body? Um, I'm also passionate about sustainability. I took a study abroad trip last January to Australia where all we did was study sustainability in business, and I think that gives me a really good background for um, how we as an organization can um, sort of practice in a way that follows the definition of people benefit and prosperity. Um, I know ASPLU and I love ASPLU. It's become a huge part of who I am and my identity as a PLU student. Um, I know that ASPLU wants to listen to the students. 
I know we haven't always in the past, but we've really tried. And that the people involved really want to hear from you. And um, I want to know why you don't feel like you're being listened to. Um, and I want to know how we can do better. So please vote. Um, I hope you vote for me, but just vote in general. And um, thank you for coming out again. Thank you. All right. Aaron. Uh, thank you for coming. I imagine the next person would say that too. Um, <laughs> I would love to, to get up on my soapbox right now and tell you guys about why you should vote for me, but I think uh, something that I feel uh, is more important to address is why so many students are here tonight as compared to previous years. And it has been a very divisive campaign, regrettably so, and I think uh, the amount of dialogue and the type of dialogue that's been had uh, has ranged from very constructive to very destructive, and I think uh, it's, been, it's been an amazing learning opportunity, I know for me personally, um, to explore where I stand on a lot of, a lot of issues that I necessarily didn't um, ever consider myself to be a, a, a strong proponent of before. Um, and I think, uh, as much as I like to think that in about a week and a half, I'll be representing all of you and have an opportunity to address the student body as a whole again, uh, I want to take this opportunity to encourage every student in here uh, to learn from this week as an opportunity to see just how involved we should be all the time. I know um, when things get chaotic and people start, um, start talking directly about other candidates and their, their statements, it gets very hard to uh, to not want to be involved and to, to make sure your voice is heard, but you should be this passionate about getting your voice heard all year round. ASPLU is all ears, and we can't wait to hear uh, everybody be just this fired up uh, next year, regardless of whether I'm president or Tom's president or Emily is vice president or Ian is vice president. Um, this is probably the most hectic three days I've had of my entire life. <laughs> Thanks to all of you folks being so passionate about something, and um, I'd love to see that passion continue. Um, I encourage you all to vote. I, I think that since you're here, you probably already are planning on it. Um, but thanks for learning opportunity for our campus. Um, thanks for learning opportunity for me, uh, for all the other candidates, and uh, thanks for coming again. Thomas? Well, I want to thank you, everyone, to come. But uh, so my promise for you guys is something very tangible that your student government would be working for you, promising you something that is very tangible. For example, academic excellence. Promoting you guys to do what you guys are here for. You guys are here to take classes, to study something. And uh, that's, that's one of my promises. And two, social activities. Really, we are here not only to study, but to have fun, to enjoy the college life, whether it be going to um, uh, music concerts or um, athletic events, or just participating in um, drama, or going to ASW sponsored dances, and all that good stuff. Um, we need to um, expand on that, and that's what I'll be doing. And the third thing, as, my, as I mentioned earlier, um, make the adoption available for um, people of all faith to um, grow. Um, college is a very multiple time of our lives, and uh, I believe ASPLU is crucial in uh, forming you guys um, academically, socially, and um, religious-wise to grow as a person. And uh, that's my promise for you. And uh, thank you for coming tonight. Thank you, candidates.